Well, hey there, everyone. You're looking at the latest uh, print run of the World at War Compendium, Volume 1, <coughs> which implies that there well may be a Volume 2 at some point. And I thought I'd like to, uh, well, I didn't think I'd like to, but I would know I want to show you this, because I think, uh, tight baggy, that you will like it. Plus, if I can just get it out of the bag, otherwise, you know what, That's, there's a maps in the back. Let me do this. Take it out carefully because I don't want to hack up the maps. So you've got your. Uh, I'm sorry about the glare. I wonder if I can make this. Ooh, that's not good. Well, that's actually more of a white light, so you get to see the colors better. So I'm just putting, let me turn it away for you. Anyway, it's about the best I could do for you guys. Sorry. All right, so we got. Um, this is the first map. Now notice uh, in the reprint they've labeled the maps from the compendium and put map numbers on them so that you can track them down a little more easily. Uh, got the big number one there. These are all uh, World at War uh, maps for the compendium. This is, for these, this is used for the Marines and some of the Syrian conflict and stuff like that. Very nice, and they're all on a nice, thick, heavy uh, stock, and they feel quite solid. I like that. Now, the compendium itself, I think you'll notice a few differences that you'll probably like. I've already had a look at this. Uh, yeah, you got it. Full color. The entire thing is done in full color. And not only that, uh, this is all done in-house at Lock and Lock. And it is really, really, really nice. Everything here, uh, tactical notebook, all the same articles that you'd expect uh, are in here. All the scenarios are done in color with uh, the maps. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of, you know, I've played, well, not all of them, but I've played a lot of these scenarios. <coughs> and it's great to see them in color, finally. I'm sorry, it's, it's probably hard for you to see all that. I've got the, uh, let me adjust the camera. Crunch, crunch, crunch. There we go. Let's see if this will help a little bit. Sit still, please. The foibles of using a small stand and a small camera. So this gives you a feel for the quality. Now here's the thing I like the most. Look how this is bound. The other one, uh, I think had a different binding. I'd have to grab it and check it, but I'm pretty sure it did because it 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 actually started to come apart. The glue for the pages would come apart here, and this is really well done for an in-house publication. This is amazing. And the paper quality is really good. It's not too shiny. Uh, nice to read. Great, great, great deal. Love it. All right. So there's that. Now the other thing I do have that I'll show you is I have a pre-release version. Hopefully they'll send me the counters for this. Pre-release version of number 15. And this is also apparently printed in-house and in full color. And this one is dealing with uh, the expansion for this is a lock and load expansion. And it will have uh, Afghans, um, in actual fact, Mujahideen. So and villagers, of course, villagers, of course. And it's set in the 80s, and it's a uh, real-world history, not uh, the uh, kind of not the hypothetical World War III. This is all set in the uh, time of the Afghan War, and it's a there's a whole set of scenarios in here, starting at page 41 and carrying through to page 59. You can see the map. There's the diagram of how to set the maps up. And you're thinking, well, what, what, what maps are they? Okay, you want to see? Here's the new map format, folded map, heavy stock. When I say heavy, I, was, I'll call, I would call it medium weight. It's not heavy. It's much heavier than what has been published in these magazines previously. Also labeled, map two, map two of uh, two. Now that's the valley. You use that for the valley scenario. And then you've got a little village. And you'll see that this dark terrain actually is, is quite striking on the on the map and uh, comes up real nicely. And there's actually three levels of terrain. Uh, sorry for the glare there, guys. A big LED lamp here. So this is very, very cool. Oh, look, and this is, oh, man, 
I'm telling you, there's this dude. There's actually a really cool article here on uh, the 40th Army in Afghanistan. And then you get yours truly somewhere. I wrote a narrative and they stuck it in the magazine. How cool is that? See how big they had to make the pictures because there wasn't enough text. <clears throat> anyway, battle report from the uh, Baltic Fury expansion. Oh, and a, a preview of uh, Falling Stars, the new three-dimensional mini uh, spy, uh, spy uh, sci-fi uh, game that they have uh, developed. Uh, I've seen that played. It was very popular up at Game On, up in Seattle. I always had a table of eight or ten people wanting to play. It was very nice. Uh, some Jeff Lewis talking about, and Roger Lewis talking about house ruling. Very cool. And I have not read the rest of the magazine. There's, this is, I think, something to do with... Oh, this is fiction that was carrying on part three of three uh, from uh, War Party. So that's uh, that's pretty nice. And then there's some Nations at War scenarios. Another one, two, three, four, five, four scenarios there. Two more... Uh, Two more World of War scenarios. Man, will this dude never stop? Uh, Jeff Schultz is just going crazy, making scenarios up. And Rigo has uh, put two together. Awesomeness. And then Matt Lozzi also brought one out as well. Very nice. Tons of stuff. Matt does two. All right. So, more than you can handle. There's probably 30 scenarios in here. Am I exaggerating? Who knows? Buy it and see. Who knows? Um... So that brings me to a point. Now that they're doing all of this stuff in-house, they are able to reprint on demand. And they sent me everything, even issue number one. Let's have a look at issue number one. And it has all the maps from issue number one redone. Lock and load stuff, World of War, all in full glorious color. Look at all that. Just really, really nice. I haven't even had a chance to read this yet. I can't wait to do this. I've read a PDF of it, but I'm really excited to have these all in hard copy and have all the maps too. Look at all these. Are, this, uh, these can't all be from the same one. Maybe they are. I think they are. There's uh, three, four maps. And uh, there's the counters already pre-printed for you. So you can make your own counters. Um, all of the other issues that are reprinted that I have, I've got a copy of all of them here, I have those that had counters in them <coughs> were uh, um, already made. I'll show you what I mean. Here's one here. Oh, you know what? Let's look at the uh, the one that was the biggest debacle. Where is that one? Kind of dumped them all on the floor. There we go. This guy, the Baltic Fury one, has been redone. Looks a whole lot better. That's the back of the counter sheet. Let me flip this over carefully. And they've taken the linen, uh, actually I think that still has the linen finish on it, but it's much less apparent, so uh, that's much nicer. Uh, a little bit deeper reds for the Soviets, and then you've got the Danes. Uh, the Danes still have that kind of pink color, uh, but that is what it is. And then uh, you've got all the uh, lock and load counters that you need, and some nations at war, or whatever it is. So, very cool stuff. So all of these games, all of these magazines will come uh, in full color and much better maps and by the looks of it much better counters and I'm about to knock all these guys off let me put this to one side carefully all right there you go uh, that's uh, that's kind of the, a quick update and look at the the new in-house printing I imagine that very soon we'll be hearing that they'll be able to print all their counters in-house as well and that will be something to, something to uh, to talk about